to go ahead and bring in our good friend, the chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department, Greg Flynn. Great to have you with us again, Chief. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. I'm doing well. How are you? We're good. Before we uh, have you take us on a tour, can we just kind of do a summer check-in? How are things going over there at the fire department? Uh, we have been busy, unfortunately, at the FD. Uh, there have been a uh, few fires related to uh, fireworks, uh, um, and uh, you know, just in the in the past few weeks, four significant uh, fires with uh, unfortunately some significant loss as a result of that. So uh, again, fires everyone's fight. Uh, we really believe in that that it takes a community to to keep the community safe. Uh, and remember, we're responding to the fire. So the best thing is to prevent that fire altogether and have it never happen. So we just want to again be safe when you're grilling. Keep that grill uh, away from your home. Remember, there are no grills on uh, balconies or anything like that in the township. And um, uh, you know, we have a no burning, open burning ordinance as well. So we want to be respectful of all those things. And Chief, can I ask you as well? It seems like it's been crazy again this summer on the lakes. And I know that uh, your team, um, not necessarily on the water, but have you had to respond to any emergencies because of actions on the water? Well, there's always uh, some action on the water, and uh, there are times that we start drifting that way, uh, no pun intended. Um, but the uh, fortunate thing is, thus far this year, uh, the residents have been doing a, a great job out on the water as it relates to uh, our interaction. Well, that's good to know because uh, the lakes have been packed again this summer. But um, with that, we're always grateful having a, you and your team because I think a lot of people, when they think firefighters, they don't understand that you're also responding to medical emergencies as well. I know that my neighbor had uh, a medical emergency with his grill and I looked out the window and it's the fire trucks and the ambulances. Everyone is arriving on scene at the same time. So it's a great collaboration um, with the police department as well. But really, you need to view the fire department as an all hazards response. And we do that and take all of our tools with us on many of the different calls that we get. It's one of the conversations that we frequently will have uh, you know, in the Kroger parking lot, you know, why is it that you bring this fire truck to go grocery shopping? You bring this big fire truck and park it out here. And the answer to that is that we're ready to go with all of our tools. It's not, um, it, it's a story that we can share that we've been in the Kroger store when something's happened and the paramedics are right there, the firefighters are right there as the alarm goes off. So those things happen and we are ready to respond 24-7, 365 days a year here in the township for our residents and our residents' guests. So with that, we're excited. You're uh, at Fire Station 3, and you're going to give us a tour because we know that um, a lot of the open houses, I know last year it was canceled. Do you anticipate to cancel them again this year? Ryan, how did you know we were at Fire Station 3? Was there some kind of giveaway? <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know, uh, you, mind reader. I'll tell you what, you can't sneak anything past you, can we? <laughs> I will say, it was uh, before we went on air here, I told Tyler, I'm like, you're like our resident reporter because you were doing kind of the walkthrough. And I was like, that's exactly what we always did as reporters. Right before you went live, it was like, okay, I'm going to move over here. I need you to pan here, and then we're going to walk here. Right, yeah, and, and the fire marshal's uh, working the camera today. He does a great job with it. But we are here at Fire Station 3, and, and uh, we did have our opening here, Fire Station 3, in 2019, uh, October of 2019, and we did have it open. The doors open and the residents could take a peek, which, as you said in the uh, introductory uh, comments there, it's been a while. Uh, the firefighters miss the residents, and um, we, we love those visitors coming in and saying hello when they're well, when they're safe and having uh, a positive interaction like that. Uh, we are um, slated to go with our open house this year. I'll watch our Facebook page. That's always that first Sunday uh, uh, in October. It's gonna be October 3rd this year, and it runs from noon to three as it has for decades. Um, so look forward to that again at Fire Station 1, 4601 Orchard Lake Road, right in front of the high school. So with that, um, give us a tour of the station here, because I think some people really don't understand that you are there 24-7. I think we lost the chief for just a moment. Greg Flynn with us again uh, here on the Mega Cast. He's the chief of the West Bloomfield Fire Department. We will unmute ourselves so they can hear us. Now we're back, Ronnie. Hey, chief. 
We're back. Hey, you so, know what? It's, uh, it's live television. It happens, right? We love it. We love it. We love it. And we respond to emergencies like this. You and you and Tyler are good at this as well. So, um, but we are here at Fire Station Three. Uh, this is, we think is an appropriate place to start. You're actually looking at uh, behind me here, back in uh, 1954, what the fire station looked like uh, here on the grounds. And uh, back in uh, the early 70s, this this is the old building. There was an addition placed on Fire Station 3. Another picture here of uh, the original apparatus that ran out of uh, Station 3. And here's an even uh, older picture of uh, this. I believe this one's the Fire Station uh, downtown in uh, Kigo, but just a little bit more of the history here. Some, some interesting little facts about this feature wall uh, here that's in our main gathering space within the engine house. Where you see here West Bloomfield Fire Station, we captured that and brought that inside uh, the new building. And these bricks that you see right here are bricks from the original building. And uh, those are just to keep a little bit of our history. And this is a, a piece of memorabilia that was in the watch room. And, uh, you know, residents could come up and ring a bell uh, to, uh, to get the attention of the firefighters well before all the different kinds of alarms and, and things that would go off uh, inside the engine house. So I'm going to spin around here and show you a little bit of uh, the main area, the kitchen area, where uh, the firefighters spend a great deal of their time. Uh, now, this wouldn't be me sucking up at all here by having this uh, displayed on the screen right now. But the table that you see here uh, was made by one of our firefighters. And in the pictures that I showed you, there was a large oak tree that had to come down. And we were able to... Uh, capture pieces of that oak tree, and that's what this is. So this is another component that we brought into the engine house from the rich history that Fire Station is Fire Station Three has played uh, within our community. And and one of our firefighters built this, uh, which makes it all the more special. In the center of the table is the uh, labor organization's uh, IFF 1721. That's the labor group here of our firefighters. Uh, the fire union here in the township. And we have a great working relationship with them. And they do great work uh, through the IFF 1721 Foundation. Uh, I'll show you the kitchen and then I'll pause for uh, some questions you guys may have. But it's a completely stainless steel kitchen. Uh, that's very purposeful. You might even hear a little bit of a kind of an echoey sound from in here. And a lot of that was very, it wasn't purposeful to make it echo. It was purposeful to make it very easy to clean and disinfect. And this really uh, is something I think that came onto everybody's mind. We, didn't, we weren't planning for a pandemic, um, but this is a very easy, all easy surfaces for them to uh, disinfect and clean. Uh, behind me is a door that goes out onto a patio that has a nice uh, uh, view uh, out into the community. And again, the, the grill is out there. You know, we sometimes hear about how firefighters like to cook. They not only like to cook, they love to cook. Um, and that's a big part. This kitchen table, this space is a bit of a sacred space in any engine house across this country because the meals take place here, and that's a really important part. So with that, Chief, uh, how many days out of the month do first responders there at the firehouse work? Is it, It's 24-hour shifts? They do. They work, they, Their shifts start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they work all the way till 8 o'clock in the morning the following day, so a full 24 hours on then they're given 24 hours off, then they're scheduled for a 24 hours on, and then there's a 72 hour schedule break there before they come back. It's a six day cycle, and that just continues to rotate. So they're never working every Saturday or every Monday. It, uh, it moves throughout the, the week, uh, throughout the month. Um, but we know our schedules. They know whether they'll be working Christmas in 2022 or 23 or 26 because the six day cycle just goes on as long as they're on that, that unit assignment. And I think, you know, for a lot of people in the regular public, that's one of those components that they don't understand because they'll say, why do they need a kitchen? Well, you're living at the firehouse basically when you're on duty. Oh, sure. And I think once they come in and they see how the firefighters engage with this and uh, the importance of a meal and and being well hydrated and, and you know, all the, all the things that you would do at home, we need to create that here. And um, when you're here for 24 hours away from your family, I think we all agree if we're traveling or, or we have to be away on business, you wanna be comfortable wherever you are because it makes that time away just a little bit uh, more tolerable. So who gets the duty of cooking? How do you guys decide that? 
So as we walk back towards the dorm rooms, the uh, assignments are uh, done by whoever the engineer is that day. So if the engineer is the person who actually drives the fire engine that day, and they're the one who's the cook for the day. Now, as we move into this back hallway, one of the features that are in here as it gets a little dark around me is all the lights are on a motion sensor now in this station. This is the only station that's set up purposefully with that. And uh, so that's in an effort for us to be energy efficient and these things that the township encourages uh, folks to build, we're doing the same thing. We also have um, bathrooms in this station that are set up where there are individual bathrooms. So um, each firefighter will have an assigned uh, room for the day, they have their own sink, their own toilet, and then their own shower. And what this has done for us is we moved away from the traditional kind of male, female uh, locker rooms, male, female, you know, areas. And now the individual, regardless of, of how they identify or, you know, being respectful of all of the different uh, folks of this inclusive, diverse workplace culture that we continue to uh, develop here at the WBFD. This makes it very easy for us to pivot uh, to whoever's scheduled here at the fire station. Wow, that's fascinating to me. I've been in uh, dozens and dozens of firehouses, and this is the first I've seen that in. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I think you're going to see a couple firsts here. I'm going to, um, one of the things that uh, you'll notice, let me just peek into this room. I guess this is one of those things we should have checked out, Byron. Um, I just wanted to, uh, this is one of the uh, individual dorm rooms. And I want to draw your attention to the picture on the wall. Um, the one thing that you'll notice that there's very little of, little of in this fire station are pictures of fire scenes and fire apparatus. Uh, we are trying to, the colors are purposefully chosen in here to be kind of cooler uh, earth tone type colors. Um, and these photos were taken by our firefighters. And so we solicited feedback from great uh, northern vacations or really any vacation across the country that were cool uh, scenic pictures. And that's what we want people to see as they're getting ready to fall asleep. That's what we want them to be reflecting on. Uh, not a very tragic or unfortunate car accident or structure fire that may have taken place in the township. This is so interesting to me. It is. And I've been in, like oh, I said, so many uh, firehouses, and I will say Detroit needs to take notice. Yeah. Uh, no asbestos and no sewage filled basement here in West Bloomfield. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to take you next just into what we call our day room. Uh, you may notice the audio changes in here. We have a carpeted floor. Uh, no windows in this room. And this was, again, a very specifically designed feature. Uh, you know, at home, we like that light and all of that coming in. Well, the firefighters, because their schedule uh, and the calls for service can come in at all different parts of the day, this gives us an environment where they can control the climate in here. They can make it uh, very dark. It makes it easier for, for viewing of the, of the screens, but also uh, it's just a quiet place and it can be dark or they can turn the lights on and that can help with sleep patterns um, within the engine house as well. So if I can ask you, Chief, as well, because your furniture is uh, cool, where does the funding come from all of the furniture and the design? So the uh, funding does come from our residents. And that's one of the things that uh, I'm very grateful for is that they trust us to make uh, those types of judgment calls. Um, the recliner again is a, a spot where when they come back from the call or later in the evening it's no different again than at your home having a comfortable chair to be in so we bling it up just a little bit uh, with some station pride and that's what you see embroidered on those chairs uh, but all of it's just really in an effort to create that camaraderie and uh, an environment that's uh, that's fun to enjoyable, I should say, to be in while you're working and serving the residents of West Bloomfield. Well, and people should recognize as well that it's so important for them to be able to have a place to decompress after some sure. of the calls that they go on. Right. Now you're hearing uh, the engine come back into quarters, so it might be a little loud on my audio for a second until the engine shuts off. But this is the, communi the communications area. You probably see a map over my right shoulder. You're also going to see a map over my left shoulder that's a digital map. This digital map is one that as the call comes in, uh, we see exactly where the call comes up and it starts routing the firefighters to it. Very similar to that of your GPS on your phone. 
All we're doing is putting it up on a large screen and, uh, and folks can see it there. Now, uh, some of the firefighters will kind of step out of the way. They're just coming back. You know, we were talking a little bit about uh, the trip to Kroger. Uh, they went on their, their call and then kind of on their way back, stopped at the uh, store, went ahead and picked up their meals for lunch and dinner. And that engineer that we talked about is gonna uh, probably get started on lunch here uh, pretty shortly. So here comes Tim Perry. Tim, good to see him. Doing well. I always so, run into them uh, at the Kroger here. Sure, and if you ever need to help pick out some good vegetables or something, Tim's a, a good one to, to lean on. So uh, he's one of the better cooks around here. So, um, all right, we're gonna uh, head down the stairs here. We're doing okay on time? Yep, we are, you're good. We're all enjoying this. Okay. Um, um, okay. We have uh, Dave Dulio is on with us next. He's a professor over at Oakland University. So, Dave, enjoy the tour, Dave. We'll be with you in just a few minutes. Okay. So we had an elevation change. The, the property here at uh, where Fire Station 3 is, uh, we evaluated all kinds of things when we consider rebuilding Fire Station 3. Should we move the station? Uh, can the, the department or the township acquire additional property? We were able to acquire more property to our south with some residential um, uh, lots there. Uh, and the reason why we needed to do that because the old fire station was not within the setbacks and all of those things, I think we're gonna hear engine three go right back out the door here from what I'm picking up in here. Um, the uh, we had to kind of narrow the building and stretch it into the space that we're talking about. And you are, you're gonna see uh, the firefighters get right back on this truck. You're gonna maybe hear some sounds. We're gonna watch too, as they go on this call, uh, maybe you can listen in on the dispatch. So what we have here is our BRICS alerting system. So it's an automated dispatch system. So you heard an automated voice that brings that over. There's some lights that are illuminating uh, in the ceiling that will indicate to the firefighters what type of call it is. And they will change different colors based on the dispatch information. So this is blue. So we know that this is a, some type of medical or injured person call. Byron's gonna go ahead and just give you a shot of them uh, getting on their bunker gear and stuff because it's, uh, I think I overheard that they're on their way to a motor vehicle accident. So someone's hurt, but they're still gonna wear all of their safety gear. One of the features we're gonna watch on the station though, as uh, they get ready to roll out are these front doors are a specific design feature that went into the fire station for a couple reasons. Um, the most important reason is that they open from left to right in the sense that they go to the sides when they bifurcate and open. This is different than the doors that are on the rear of the station that are a roll-up door. So as the fire apparatus is leaving, the fire engineer can see left to right what that the doors are completely open. One of the challenges we sometimes have is with roll-up doors, the, the engineer can't see how high the door is and occasionally they will clip the top of the truck on the roll-up door. It's gonna get a little loud, bear with us here. Okay, so uh, as they're on their way out, again, I think sometimes people think that they just jump right in and hit the gas. Uh, there's a series of uh, safety checks that the truck goes through. They're putting on their safety restraints just like we would want anybody else to. They're the engineer, or the, the company officer on the right seats checking the location and, and talking with dispatch. But you can see how quickly those doors open and close. Um, and so that's a, that's a pretty neat feature there. So I'll pause there in case you guys had any questions about anything that just happened. So with that, Chief, if I can uh, ask, because I will say this really is a state of art uh, firehouse, and I know it's uh, one of the newer ones within uh, the county and every fire department needs to have a firehouse like this. Um, when we're talking about uh, the crew, how many people are typically on a shift uh, any given day there? So it's a four-person station. So there's uh, two on a fire engine and two on the ambulance. Now the ambulance normally would roll out of here with them, but they were on a call earlier and are down at Henry Ford Hospital. So what we say is the next due, so the next closest ambulance within the township, one of the other fire stations is gonna uh, tandem up with engine three and respond to that motor vehicle accident. 
There's so many logistics that go into this every single day. You guys do a great job. Uh, and I, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, our uh, our friends over in our comm center, our communication center at, at dispatch. They're the ones that make all that magic happen with the multiple calls they're probably getting on that motor vehicle accident, quickly processing those calls, simultaneously getting the information out to us, getting a police fire EMS response going there. They really are rock stars and we're very grateful for what our dispatchers do to help get the right resources to our residents that need us. But right now I'm in the, uh, the uh, gear storage area. This is what we call an extractor. This is a very special um, uh, clothes washer, if you will. This is what the fire gear will go in and uh, the way the um, detergents go through and the way it spins and the, the speed that it goes, it's able to pull out those carcinogens that uh, can embed while the firefighters are in there. Once they wash their gear, they come down here to a uh, our dryer and this is what's neat about this one the old ones are, are are pretty crazy they've been around well before i arrived at the department but this one's brand new and it's dual featured so we can put wet hose in here and it would uh, flake out we would say on these racks and the air comes up and through and exhausts out and they would dry but the newer ones have these rods in here so we can hang our fire gear in here and then the fire gear will dry uh, as well inside of here so uh, that's pretty neat. Um, and if we have enough time, I'll take you to one more spot, our fitness area, and uh, we'll see how we're doing then. If we have time, we can go outside and look at some of the features out there. We're running a little bit uh, late, so if we can do it in the next minute, will that be okay? Sure. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll do it from right here. Up over my shoulder, you'll see some windows, and that's our fitness area, and it divides these two apparatus bays from two more additional apparatus bays on the other side. And I just wanted to comment on how when the firefighters up there, there's fitness, there's a stair climber, their weights, that kind of stuff, that they're able to look down, see what's going on, and uh, uh, then they quickly will just come down the stairs and come right here and be ready to respond. So I really appreciate you guys taking some time to see Fire Station 3 right here uh, in West Bloomfield. I can't wait for the open house because this has been fascinating. And yeah, I will say, Chief, uh, like I said, I've been in dozens and dozens of firehouses and I've enjoyed this tour. And so shout out to Larry for uh, suggesting it, but also yeah. to all of you for what you do each and every day. And uh, are you guys still hiring? I think uh, uh, the last time we talked, there were maybe a couple openings. There are, so we would encourage anybody that would uh, be interested in, in working with the WBFD to visit the township website, go to the HR heading and uh, look for the posting for firefighter paramedic. Uh, and remember, we're willing to hire paramedics and send them to fire school. So if you know someone who's a state certified paramedic, send them our way and then we'll pay them to go to school. And if you're in paramedic school and you already have your fire one and two credentials and you're close to finishing, we wanna talk to you too. Uh, the market's hot and uh, we'd love to have you here at the WBFD. And I will say uh, you'd be, anyone would be lucky uh, to work for your department under your leadership as well. So thank well, you thank again, you. Chief. We've enjoyed the tour. Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a great day.